The Nivks are some of the most ancient people of the Far East. Archaeologists identify these people with the so-called Ahotsk culture. They emerged in the first millennium BC in the basin of the Amur River and spread out to the Sakhalin and the Kuril Islands. The Nivks' ancestors settled by the sea or at river mouths. They went fishing and gathered berries. For hundreds of years, they lived by sea hunt and fishing. Many Nivks have retained the attributes of the ancient culture. Most of them live in the north of Sakhalin in the village of Nikrasovka. According to the census of 2002, there were only 1,830 Nivks left on the island, with approximately the same number living on the mainland. But there's a different problem. Only 10% of them remember their native language. And that number is constantly decreasing. You did not expect any visitors, did you? Who'd come to see me other than you? <laughs> Do you want more guests then? Will you treat me to some tea? Tea? Sure, let's have some tea and a chat. The old marine hunter is accustomed to solitude, which is only occasionally interrupted by his younger sister, who lives nearby. Come on in. Sit down on the sofa. I'll brew the tea. Close the door, please. Leonid started fishing before I had even gone to school. He was around 10 then. He attended the elementary school at the time. I remember how he pushed the boat away from the shore using a pole. At the time, poles were used instead of oars to take out the nets. In summer, starting from June, they went fishing for small fish, smelt, and then humpback salmon. It was sun-cured and salted for the winter. At the end of the summer, they caught keta salmon, and towards October, they went hunting for seals. Women, in the meantime, went to gather berries and a variety of herbs. Today's treats are the rosehip tea and the unfailing autumn attribute, red caviar, or as it's jokingly called here, nifk marmalade. <laughs> when are you going out to sea again? One of these days. I'll finish repairing my motorbike and then go. It's stormy anyway in the bay at the moment, but I think that the weather will improve by tomorrow. A good fisherman feels the sea, even if he's blind or deaf. Once there lived such an old man. He sat by the sea in the evenings waiting for the right wind. As soon as he felt cold running down his spine, he would throw out a net and pull it back full of fish. Today, there's only one person of that kind left in Sakhalin, an old man, Leonid Ugain. He is a sort of local attraction, the last of the Mohicans, attracting researchers even from abroad. This fisherman remembers a Japanese named Sarisi. The researcher has already visited Nikrasovka a few times with the purpose of studying the unique dialect of the Nifk language, which is the mother tongue of Leonid. The researcher asked him questions and recorded him speaking as they were having tea in the kitchen or while the old man was busy repairing his motorbike in the garage. That's exactly what he's on now. I am a fisherman, but how can I go to the sea without this old tub? I can't carry the net on my shoulders, nor the oars. Where would I place them? That's why I made this thing, a sort of carry cot. <laughs> Volodya Vilayan, the student of Leonid Ugain, is one of the best fishermen in the region. While the old man is repairing his motorbike, Volodya explores the rookeries for tomorrow's hunting. The northwest wind is blowing now. Usually we hunt for seals over there, where the low tide is in full force. There's a rookery in that place. Usually we go by one or two boats. 
There are at least two people per bow, one for the oars and the other to hold the gun and the harpoon. Sometimes both of us have harpoons or a harpoon and a shotgun. You never know on which side of the boat the seal will appear. Usually we kill seals when the cold weather sets in, so that there's food for the dogs over winter, and so that we can stock up on fat for the cold days. As for the skins, that's the women's domain. They collect the pelts and fleece and make shoes. Mostly boots. At least they used to do that. They made robes from fish skin. It was first dried, then crumpled for a long time. And then, only then, it could be sewed. After thousands of years of living by the sea, the Niks seem to have become one with it. The designs on their clothes, their toys, their puppets are all damp with the salty smell of fish including their musical instruments. We have a musical instrument called Tingrin. It's as old as the roar of the sea. My sister used to play it in the local folk group. These days she hardly ever plays it. Why don't you try to play it now? In the middle of the first millennium AD, the ancestors of the modern Niks left Sakhalin in search of better lives and migrated south to the island of Hokkaido. But there they encountered a different Satsuman culture, the Anu or Ezo, the indigenous population of the northern Japanese islands. They stopped the advance of the marine hunters, forcing them to turn back from Hokkaido and return to Sakhalin. Ironically, a few centuries later, the Ainu themselves were absorbed by the Japanese Empire. At the same time, the echo of the old Achotz culture is still perceptible here in the north of Sakhalin, the area frequented by the Japanese researchers that are searching for links to their primeval history. Although even this Nif melody does not sound as authentic as it used to. <laughs> The tin green does not sound the same way it used to. It's not tuned. What? I'm saying it's out of tune. Must be the strings, or the drum must have dried out. Yes, it might be the drum. The next day, Leonid starts to prepare for his trip early in the morning. Oars, a harpoon, a bag with the fishing gear, a gun, and an anchor. That's all a modern seal hunter needs. Now the most important thing is for a favorable wind to start blowing. Regardless of the forecast, Anif always has to remember that the sea is a living spirit, a toll ease, the master of big water. You need to not only understand and feel him, but also treat him as your breadwinner. Before going out to sea, one has to feed the master of the water to appease his spirit. This is for the Father Sea to bring us luck and for a, a calm sea, for hunting and fishing luck. Neither Leonid Ugain nor Velodya Velayan know how old this ritual is. Let's go. The master of the sea is usually treated to a mos, a traditional dish made from fish skins, berries, rice and seal fat. 
but the stock of seal and berries are finished and have not yet been replenished. September and October are not only the hunting and fishing season, but also the peak time to collect berries, taiga berries and cranberries, or siksa, as the locals call it. We pick siksa in autumn and use it for special dishes. To make a moss, it has to be soaked, and then we add boiled fish or milt, fish skin, fat, and potato. We call it kartoshka matot, which means cooked potato. Previously, we didn't add potato to this dish, and there was no word for it. In addition to siksa, which has always been found here, we've always had those small conifer trees and osier and other rare trees as rare as the Neef people like large trees. According to a legend, the first Neef, which literally means a man, emerged from the resin of this tree. That's why the taiga is as sacred for them as the sea. Leave this sweet for the master under the tree. That's it. Let him enjoy it and allow us to pick berries today. What's happening now can be called an offering to the spirits of the forest, done to appease the spirits in order to pick a lot of berries and to catch a lot of fish. Meanwhile, the men have gone out to sea. Velodia spotted a shoal of seals in the rookery while Leonid sat on the bow of the boat holding his gun ready. The hunting will start shortly. However, the old myth is replayed again on the mirror-like surface of the water. The seal is leaving. It means that it's not the right time yet. The day will come when there will be food. The sea does not like impatience and greed. We never killed a large quantity of seals. Only when there was shortage of food. Normally in winter, The women are more successful. They found a good crop and settled there. We gather taiga berries, siksa for the winter, so that in winter, we have something to eat. We also picked cloud berries, blueberries, all the berries that grow in our meadows. If all goes well, Zoya will prepare a special dinner for her brother to celebrate the harvest. Leonid just complained that the tradition of holding those dinners is long forgotten. People don't cook the way they used to anymore. For example, my sister, the women of my generation still haven't lost a skill. But the you say, we don't know how to do that. Or they simply don't want to. But if you cook a seal, they'll all come to the feast. Everyone likes to eat. Unfortunately, things at sea did not go as the old man Leonid had planned. Being a fisherman, he can't return empty-handed. Together with Valodia, they go to the other side of the Palmer Bay to try their luck with the nets there. Leonid. 
You stay here. I'll go quietly. Just like seal hunting, putting up nets requires teamwork for the Neefs. At least two people are required to do it. One to uncoil the casting net, the other to pull it out to the right depth, perpendicular to the shore. The fishermen decided on a spot and caught their first fish within a few minutes. This is a summer fish. Over there we caught an autumn one. And this striped one is a summer type, with teeth. For Leonid, this is more than mere fishing. It is a date with his beloved element, the sea, which his life is strongly connected to, living at the water's edge. This autumn day went well in the taiga. They didn't manage to fill the buckets to the brim but did get enough to cook Vizgals, Leonid's favorite dish. Now all that's left is to decide who will be cooking it. Are you going to cook? No, not me, she'll do it. Zoya, don't pass the buck, you're the best cook here. Everything becomes clear later in the evening when the first guests appear at the gate of Leonid's house. <laughs> they arrive to find a true feast. Yes, this time the women have displayed all their culinary talents. <laughs> Movi was taken to the table, and the Vizgals made of siksa is ready. There's also raw fish, ya mahara, we serve it like that. It is a special day for Leonid. Not only because for the first time in several years he has put on his special shirt, but because for the first time in a long time his native language, which has almost ceased to be heard on the streets, could be heard in this house again. The dishes he has loved since his childhood are on the table. The Vizgals made from cooked fish and siksa. The moss made from cooked fish skin and sweet berry mousse. Fish heads, stroganina, all that the sacred taiga and the sea have been providing to the nifs for centuries. This toast does not require a translation. It's enough to see the happy faces of those rare people. <laughs> <laughs> A hundred years ago, things were completely different. One only has to look at those photographs to see it. The people in those photographs look completely different, belonging to a different epoch of a different kind. A lot has changed in their everyday lives, yet their faces remain the same. <laughs>